This is the story of how a public official got so heated over a billboard that his influence caused it to be vandalized. Also in the story are the events leading up to it, the Donort community's reaction to all of that, and what comes next. Here's how we got here. For Redwood Voice, I'm Persephone Corvidros. This report is meant to document what exactly has been going on with this ever-developing story over the past couple of months. Though this will be broken down to tell a fuller narrative, I will go ahead and clarify that this story is about the vandalism of a billboard from the California Endowment because it contained the phrase Black Lives Matter, which enraged white supervisor Roger Gitlin and his many supporters. Then, the ensuing rally against these sets of racist actions, and the billboard that will be coming in its place now that its period of time to be displayed has ended. The best place to start a story is at the beginning, so I'll be taking all of the pieces of this puzzle to show you how, exactly, we got here. Let's start off with the first district supervisor of Del Norte County, Roger Gitlin. There is certainly a lot that I could say about him, and I have, so I'm going to remain reserved as I recently released the first ever episode of the Accountability Corner, which he is the star of. In that video, I crack down on some of his harmful ideologies in recent events, why those ideologies are flawed, and, again, how the community responded to them. So for an especially in-depth look into his crooked ideas and the damage of their permeation, I strongly recommend watching it. It's a long one, so I recommend getting some popcorn before you get into it, but I can confidently say that not a moment goes by that doesn't delve into something important. Instead, we'll set a very base-level intro. Supervisor Roger Gitlin moved to Del Norte County in Northern California from Santa Clarita, somewhere near the beginning of the 2010s. His current term began January 2017 and ends at the end of this year, December 2020, with supposed plans to retire in January. He has a Facebook profile that he uses as his typical mouthpiece to spread his views, projects, actions, whatever he wants to share with the public. This is going to be a source of a good bit of information from his side for this report. Some of those views include denial of the dangers of the COVID-19 pandemic and his support for fully reopening all businesses and other possible locales to rescue the economy. Historically, he has had quite a streak with our rather large homeless population. For those outside of our county who don't know about the quite visible issue, the NorCal Continuum of Care 2020 report placed 248 counted homeless people in Del Norte County, only 65 of which had some form of shelter and, of course, taking into consideration that these are only the ones who are counted. When I was homeless, I wasn't exactly surveyed, nor would I have been honest since I was a minor, so always expect that the real number will probably be quite a bit higher. His dealing with the problem has ranged from self-declared town halls to a discuss the homeless population as a problem that must be removed from our county, rather than a group of people who are in need of help, which led to such moves as creating bans on overnight parking for people who took shelter in RVs, and his continual insistence to relay his supporters' disdain for seeing homeless people in our community. What I'm getting to is, Roger Gitlin has seldom been one to let his position get in the way of his views. Anyone and everyone who lives here knows who and what he stands for, and a quick scroll through the old Facebook feed will tell you exactly that. But while Gitlin's posts are something that members of the community, supporters and opposers alike, are all more than accustomed to, there was a specific Facebook post that really set these events off. On July 10th, 2020, Roger Gitlin made a Facebook post claiming to quote evangelist Franklin Graham of Samaritan's Purse that incited hate speech, declaring that it speaks fully for him. Here is that post in full. Quote, This is Franklin Graham, son of Billy Graham, who delivered this powerful speech to the congregation of the First Baptist Church of Jacksonville, Florida. Franklin's every word speaks for me and millions of other Americans. I hope you pass this post on to your Facebook friends. Beginning the quote of Franklin Graham's speech, Time is like a river. You cannot touch the water twice because the flow has passed will never pass again. America will not come back. The American dream ended November 6, 2012. The second term of Barack Obama has been the final nail in the coffin for the white Christian males who discovered, explored, pioneered, settled, and developed the greatest republic in the history of mankind. Coalition of black, Latinos, feminists, gays, government workers, union members, environmental extremists, the media, Hollywood, uninformed young people, the forever needy, the chronically unemployed, illegal aliens, and other fellow travelers have ended Norman Rockwell's America. You will never again outvote these people. 
It will take individual acts of defiance and massive displays of civil disobedience to get the rights we have allowed them to take away. It will take zealots, not moderates and the shy, not reach across the aisle, rhinos, Republican in name only, to right this ship and restore our beloved country to its former status. People like me are completely politically irrelevant, and I will probably never again to be able to legally comment on or concern myself with the aforementioned coalition, which has surrendered our culture, our heritage, and our tradition without a shot being fired. The Cocker Spaniel is off the porch, the Pit Bull is in the backyard, the American Constitution has been replaced with Saul Alinsky's Rule for Radicals and the likes of shyster David Axelrod and international socialist George Soros have been pulling the strings of the beige puppet and has brought us Act Two of the New World Order. The curtain will come down, but the damage has been done. The story has been told. Those who arrive after this generation will again have to risk their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honor to bring back the republic that this generation has timidly frittered away due to white guilt and political correctness. In God we trust. Thus ends the end of Franklin Graham's speech, and continues Roger Gitlin's original wording. Thank you, Franklin Graham. God bless you. Signed, Roger Gitlin. So that gives us a big jump start on where Gitlin stands. Oh, and to clarify something, Franklin Graham did not give the speech. Snopes reports that it is misattributed. Now you may be thinking, what does this have to do with the billboard? Don't worry, don't worry, we're getting there. This is a narrative. Exposition. Though his supporters cheered his incitement of bigoted hate speech, many members of the community were sure to speak up against it, denouncing this putrid spewing of hate. Gillen's response was to block those who disagreed and like the responses of those who agreed, which perfectly demonstrates the way that Roger Gillen operates. He also technically can do that because of a legal loophole, so while it is incredibly sketchy that a public official can block people from seeing his posts meant for the public, he can technically do so because, infuriatingly, legislation only speaks on Facebook pages being unallowed to do that when ran by a public official, not Facebook profiles, even if they operate the same way, as we see Gitlin doing. So, we have this dynamic. Roger Gitlin promotes or incites hate. Some of the community echoes their support, much more of the community denounces him. He likes the former and blocks the latter. The first sign of a cycle. A cycle we will continue to see, echoing whatever fuels him, ignoring whatever does not. And again, if you would like to hear an analysis breaking down the ideas of this hate speech, why they're wrong in more ways than one, and some of the other strange details that arose from this entire scenario, such as Roger Gitlin leaking someone's email after she publicly spoke out against him so that his supporters could harass and bombard her, in emails he was also CC'd in as though wanting to witness it, harassment that also included threatening a business a member of her own family owned and was completely unrelated to the discussion at hand, then my project, The American Rockwellian Devastation of Roger Gitlin, on the Redwood Voice YouTube channel, for my Accountability Corner series, is perfect for you. But moving forward to the next beat of this narrative. This back and forth on the hate speech kept up for a bit, even resulting in a rally in front of the Flynn Center on July 28th, organized by community member and advocate Denise Doyle Schnacker. But this rally couldn't even start, nor the month of July end, before Gitlin could get himself into yet another racist soapbox sermon. July 25th, 2020, Gitlin comes out of the woodshed holding the following Facebook post. Quote, Shame on the California endowment. Am aware this billboard has brought lots of unhelpful talk among social media. Inserting the very serious COVID-19 pandemic dilemma in a politics, the California endowment has mixed partisan, divisive opinion with public health and erecting this billboard entering Crescent City. Those who thought long and hard on who and what should appear on the public display failed abysmally in bringing our community together. All Lives Matter should have been the message, a message of bringing our groups together. Noticeably missing is any reference to European-American inclusion. The face declaring the ending of racism only underscores the racist mindset of the California endowment. The inclusion of the clenched fist sends a terrible message to our community. Tragic. The billboard is exclusionary and insulting to Delnort County and changes no minds, further polarizes us, and widens the Grand Canyon-esque gap between our diverse cultures. This shameful display should be taken down immediately, and continued funding for the California Endowment should be reconsidered. End quote. So first of all, you, and no, and yuck, and no again. Let's just break this whole thing down. 
Anyone who's kept up with the Black Lives Matter movement, especially in the wake of the murder of George Floyd only a few months ago that sparked a general resurgence in the public eye, and who has listened to black voices at all in its duration, could determine that the All Lives Matter rhetoric is a disgusting tactic to silence the black voices of our nation who are already screaming just in hopes to be heard. A message of bringing our diverse groups together, and noticeably missing is any reference to European-American inclusion, are two lines this man unironically writes. Yes, he actually means those things, in which he is making a problem out of nothing because he does not want to let attention fall onto the actual problems. His rants on the billboard to this day have been unceasing, though since I am writing this before the display of the next billboard, maybe I've jinxed myself, and when that happens, he will make one final incitement of bigotry and act as though he's victorious in some way. Not to mention, his insertion of the serious COVID-19 pandemic is a complete contradiction of everything he has preached up to this point, and still continues to preach. In fact, while I was writing this, he made a post talking about how the COVID-19 pandemic isn't really an issue in which he declares it is not a threat and that trying to protect ourselves from it is worse than the actual pandemic itself, declaring that it is a very minuscule issue, if even that. Also, the clenched fist, the one in the corner of the billboard that there's been so much controversy about, it's not even meant to be the Black Lives Matter fist, it's a logo. It's been around for a super long time on California endowment-based projects. The clenched fist and the location drop icon is part of their hashtag get loud and vote campaigns for a youth program about voting and civic engagement that's been around for a good long while too the earliest reference i could find offhand was in 2016 i found an article talking about its root and that was the logo they used in fact i found the get loud and vote style guides for how to make the logo because yeah that's their logo not that anyone did the research on it or cared to clarify they just wanted to be angry and oh was their anger. On that initial post, many more of Gitlin's supporters came out. But the reason there were less people speaking against him was because he already blocked them all, in loud favor of his denouncement. Because how dare a group of marginalized people speaking out for their atrocious treatment be given attention, huh? Let's reiterate. The California Endowment helped to put up this billboard, which was located next to the Crescent City Harbor District. The main message was about COVID-19 and committing the bare minimum of responsibility by wearing your mask. If you've not seen the billboard, it depicts headshots of seven people wearing masks, each with a statement written on them. Above them says, I wear my mask to protect my family, to support frontline workers, to build a new future. Their masks say, from left to right, protect our elders, universal health care, Black Lives Matter, dreamers, paid leave, vote, and end racism. And yet, this simple message got a whole bunch of grown adults mad because it either wasn't about them or called them out because of their own racism and bigotry. If you are mad at this incredibly simple billboard, then yes, you are racist. That is a racist thing to do. The comments, unfortunately, are swamped with his supporters because, again, he blocked his opposers on the last post. But word spread quickly about the post, and it was brought up at the previously aforementioned Flynn Center rally. From then on, Roger Gitlin committed all of his time and energy, when he wasn't denying basic health science regarding the severity of COVID-19, to smearing this billboard and inciting further hate. Now here's the kicker. July 28th, during the board meeting that was happening at the same time as the protest, where calls were coming in to demonstrate their disdain for him and vocally protest, Gitlin made his second Facebook post on the matter. It reads, quote, as many of you have asked and expressed your displeasure with the two outdoor display billboards on US Highway 101 entering Crescent City, here's the connection and responsible party which erected the billboards. The California Endowment is a health advocate. We all support good health for all of our citizens. The message on these displays divide and widen the chasm which prevents mutual respect for the various cultures which exist in Donor County. It is exclusionary. All lives matter, even those whose opinions we disagree with. Racism is not the sole province of European Americans. The displays are shameful, hurtful, insulting, and embarrassing, and paint an unfair portrait of Del Norte County. Having said that, I absolutely and emphatically condemn anyone who would deface or destroy the displays. That misguided gesture is unhelpful and simply wrong. The billboard should be taken down and rescripted in a tone of inclusivity without clenched fists references to racism, and singling out specific only racial communities at the expense of others. I hope you will contact Ms. Geneva Wiki and her staff and respectfully share your concerns for these outdoors displays. End quote. I just want to add how funny it is that Roger Gitlin looked at a sign that said Black Lives Matter and saw it as an attack on white people immediately. His first go-to is to say all lives matter, and then 
immediately defend, as he calls, European Americans. Another post receiving overwhelming support because, again, the few who commented in opposition on the last one were blocked, and the ones who spoke to support him were amplified, responded to, liked, etc. Uh, now here's the funny thing, because later on I do address this, and I realize now I am wrong, because I did miss one part in this post where he talks about how he would condemn anyone who would destroy the billboards in any way, and then immediately does a butt statement that further spreads some hate speech. I am, however, going to keep that part in because he wrote this on July 28th, quite a while before the billboard was actually defaced, and would go on to never speak about it again. So it is interesting that his immediate thought was to go to covering himself for defacing, only to then never actually speak on it when it was defaced. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's keep going. And on August 8th, he changed his status to the following post so that you can really see he means business, which reads, Friday, I sent a letter to California Endowment President CEO Robert Ross, MD, expressing community concern regarding the recently erected outdoor displays. To date, I have received almost 600 comments, the vast majority being negative, asking for the signs to be taken down or modified to reflect the diverse cultures in Del Nor County. Complaints state the signage is exclusionary, racially and ethnically insensitive and divisive, insulting, shameful, and politically offensive. In my letter to Dr. Ross, I made clear I am writing him as a private citizen and the views expressed are mine and mine alone and do not necessarily reflect the views of my colleagues on the Board of Supervisors. I am disappointed the Harbor Commission took a position that favors money rather than message. It is my hope the sign on Harbor property would be removed or modified immediately. Now it is your turn. I hope you will take a moment right now and express your opinion on the signage. Signed, Roger Gitlin. End quote. Oh, man. There are a few things to point out, not least of which being that the day he claims to have sent this letter, Friday, August 7th, the billboard was reported to be vandalized, and he completely ignored it. Someone spray-painted over both the Black Lives Matter masks and, for some reason, supposedly because in Gitlin's post, when he mentions that he claims it to be another Black Lives Matter symbol, meaning even likelier this was a Gitlin supporter, the Get Loud Voda logo, as we previously discussed. That, too, was vandalized. This was reported to the police the same day, but there have not been any updates or suspects. The funny thing is that Gitlin later proved to be aware that the vandalism happened, but he ignored it the entire time. Before we talk about the rally, let me explore this thread with you real quick. The same day he made that post, which was August 8th, someone posted a picture in the comments of the vandalized billboard to demonstrate that it was vandalized. Despite this being the very first response, and despite him earlier stating that he condemns anyone who would try to deface it, it was completely ignored. No likes, no comments, nothing. But on just about every response after that that supports Gitlin's message, he has responded, liked, or otherwise shown that he's definitely, definitely seen them, even though the billboard vandalism photo response is the first response you see. Following this are a couple more posts I'll break down, which I'll still ignore the vandalism that occurred. But eventually, August 21st, he speaks out on the new vandalism of the billboard. A vandalism kind of in air quotes because we're a little bit unsure. So this is a bit lost on the timeline, but we can confidently say it was prior to August 21st because I've personally not seen anyone else talk about this and cannot find any record elsewise of it really existing, and I partially think that is because people are confused, like myself, if I'm being totally honest. Someone spray-painted a clenched fist over the black spray paint, and since it is a white fist, no one is really sure what it's supposed to mean. To Roger, it is offensive, but someone messaged the Redwood Voice Instagram page to inform us of it as though informing that it was further vandalism, which, well, since it is a white fist, could be the case. So I genuinely do not know, and whoever painted it has not come up to say anything about it. But, but here's the thing. Gitlin completely ignored, did not mention once the actual initial clear vandalism that was definitely inscrutably vandalism, but the moment this ambiguous message appeared, he hopped right on it with the following post from August 21st, which reads, Today I have written again to California Endowment CEO Dr. Robert Ross, MD, to remove the defaced, insulting, divisive outdoor signs located on U.S. Highway 101 at the harbor. Apparently, new vandals have affixed the intimidating clenched fist under the word black on the center figure. This gesture of defacing that which many of us find offensive is not acceptable. 
The mission statement of the California Endowment is to expand access to affordable quality health care for underserved individuals and communities and to promote fundamental improvements in the health care status of all Californians. All Californians, Dr. Ross. I have respectfully asked for the removal of the signage as it worsens the division of disrespect between the various and diverse cultures in Del Norte County. Dr. Ross labeled me a hater for requesting the removal or modification of the sign. Regrettable. He then leaks both uh, Dr. Ross and Geneva Wiki's email just to really get in on the train of spamming them because that's going to do anything. This actually brings us right back to Gitlin's pattern, too. He ignores what cannot fuel him and amplifies whatever will. An additional note of interest on the vandalism, Geneva Wiki of the California Endowment informed the Wild Rivers Outpost in an email that, quote, the billboards are located in urban, suburban, and rural areas of the state. We have not experienced any pushback on the messages, with the exception of Del Norte. End quote. Yes, that's right. These billboards are all over the state, and we are the only location where something like this happened. Stepping back now into the natural flow of the timeline, back to the fresh vandalism that had occurred. The immediate Sunday, two days after, a rally was organized in front of the billboard, which I was able to be on the scene of. The long and short of it was that people in our community gathered because they wanted to absolutely make certain that this act of racism was denounced, that it does not represent us, and that it will not be welcome in our community. On the scene, I was able to photograph a good majority of the dozens of attendees with their signs, which I later posted and received an astoundingly high amount of support for, as many members of our community were incredibly pleased to see that yes, the message of anti-racism was being spread. In addition, I conducted a few interviews. What I found most interesting about speaking to people at this rally is that though everyone was there for the same reason, obviously, hoping to rally in support of the billboard, everyone had different experiences when it came to why they were there truly. Uh, what promoted them to think the way they do, and why they agreed that, yes, black lives matter. I held three interviews, and even though they were asked the same question, why are you out here today, I got three different, interesting answers. First, Denise Doyle Schnacker, who, as we mentioned earlier, organized the July 28th Flynn Center rally, read out a message from the California Endowment, and provided her own thoughts on the matter. Okay, so Denise Doyle Schnacker, um, the California Endowment leadership sent just a cursory response when I sent them the uh, a copy of the picture of the vandalism that was done to the sign, and this is what they said. The destruction of the mask billboard is wrong. It is vandalism and a crime. Covering over Black Lives Matter represents an act of hate and racism that is intended to silence and marginalize oppressed people. It is an insult to the entire Del Norte community. It is unfortunate this hate talk has been promulgated by an elected official who should instead be fostering constructive dialogue during this time of national discourse on racism. Our leaders should listen to community voices and encourage conversation and understanding in a way that represents respects the dignity of all community members. We expect more from our elected leaders. And there's a little more, but that was the basis of what I thought was, that that nailed it for me, of why we're out here, that we need to be having conversations, not a meme war about us versus them, because we all live in this community. And honestly, if someone in my community doesn't feel safe seeing a sign that says Black Lives Matter, I want to know why. How can I make them feel safe? Because them not being feeling safe then transfers on to me not feeling safe in my community because I don't know what their reaction is going to be. And I assume they don't know what my reaction is. So my reaction is I go high. From this point forward, it's positive, it's building relationships, it's loving my neighbors, period. And I expect the same from them. Secondly, Cheryl Steinrook. She had a sign that said, Say Their Names, referencing the many people of color who have been murdered at the hands of law enforcement. There was one name she wanted to talk about in particular, Larry Lee Jones, whose story I had not heard about previously. Hi, I'm Cheryl Steinrock, and I'm here for the Black Lives Matter rally, and I have made a sign that says, Say Their Names. 
Um, one of the persons I want to include is Larry Lee Jones. He uh, was murdered and killed by the Shasta County Police and the uh, Reading City Police back in 1996. And so even though he is a native Yurok man right here from Delaware County, and so I want to put him first because he's one of our local people who was actually killed by brutality. And uh, initially when they took him into custody, they beat him up out in the, on the highway north of uh, um, Reading. And then when they took him into the emergency room, bleeding, they beat him again there and then he died. And so when his brother went to pick him up or actually identify his body, he had been crying so much that the blood on his face had tear smears where he had been crying from being beaten. And so uh, I still carry that in my heart for him. It's Larry Lee Jones. And um, so the rest of the people too, I just wanted to put this on here as our local person here who has been the victim of, of police brutality in, Reddy, in Shasta County. Thank you so much. And is there anything else you would just like to make sure gets set? I think that uh, we need to be unracist. That when we look at each other, we see each other as a human being with a heart and not be worried about our skin color and what other things we put on one another because we're all basically human beings and we need to treat each other with respect no matter who we are. And as an Indian person raised this way, I can't understand why we don't. I'm right here from Delmar County. And when we have these rallies, I like to come out and welcome everyone to our country. This is Talua Dene territory, and I welcome anyone who comes here. And we have earth renewal ceremonies every year that pray for the whole entire earth, every person in it. And so therefore, I would like to thank everyone for coming out and being a part of this wonderful activity on this bright, beautiful, sunny, windy day. Thank you. And finally... I interviewed Amy Campbell Blair, as someone who keeps up with and actively tries to live my life as an ally to the Black Lives Matter movement and being anti-racist, while simultaneously knowing there's always room for me to improve. Her answer really spoke to me. I'm here because there was an act of vandalism on a local sign that is meant to help promote masks and taking care of your community. And one of the masks says Black Lives Matter, which is controversial for some reason. And, and I understand that it's a complex issue, um, but it's not complex whether or not we get to say that Black Lives Matter, like Black Lives Matter. And there's a context and a historical reason why people even feel like they need to say that. And that was the one mask that was targeted for the vandalism. So to me, that's a very targeted act. It's a racist act. It's not okay. And it's important for people to speak up and, and say that, and just be clear that like that's not okay. And we want things to be different. Um, I think that these signs have produced an interesting and conversation over Facebook that isn't always productive. And I would like to see that conversation move off of Facebook and become more productive because I think there's, there's a lot of reasons why people feel so strongly the way they do, whether it's people who I agree with or not. Um, but we don't, we don't get to debate somebody's humanity, first of all. And second of all, there's some very specific work that I believe that white people specifically need to do and need to work on. I include myself in that, in saying that it's my job as a white person to go talk to other white people and hold space for them through, you know, legitimate confusion they might have, through legitimate things they're trying to work through. And, but I don't have 
to hold space for people who aren't interested in genuine conversation, who just want to be hateful. Because that's not going to be productive. So, there's so much I could say, but um, I just feel like Thank you. it would be, it's, it's very tempting to want to be like, well, this is very overwhelming and can we just like not talk about it or just like ignore it. Um, but like we can't do that. We have to start talking about it. We have race issues in this community that we need to talk about. And it's going to be hard and it's going to be messy. And I think if we could just commit to seeing it through with each other, then we could get somewhere. I guess I would just say that for, for people who don't understand the need to say Black Lives Matter, I would say that I would say that I would say that I hear that confusion and let's have a conversation about it because you saying that that is racist to say Black Lives Matter hurts black people. And I know that because I listen to what black people are saying and they say that hurts us. So let's have a conversation about it. And as Amy Campbell Blair said, yes, it is absolutely crucial to have these conversations with black people. If you would like to hear one of these dialogues for yourself, I sat down with Elijah Brenson, a black member of the community who stumbled upon a piece of racist graffiti that said white lives mattered more, and interviewed him to give him a chance to talk about both the graffiti and billboard vandalism. He addressed how all of the energy from the side of the racists in our community is stripping time, attention, and resources from genuine problems going on with our community that are only going to get worse if they are not treated with the attention they deserve. It makes for a very interesting talk, and you can find that on the Redwood Voice YouTube channel. The cycle of Gitlin continues after this. More posts on why he hates the billboard, more of his supporters exclaiming and hopping on whenever they get the chance, ignoring whatever points of reality are happening that do not immediately benefit him. Repeat. Now that it is September, the billboard is coming down and will be replaced with a new one. Thus, the story of how we got here. For Redwood Voice, I'm Persephone Corvid-Rose. Stay safe, and Black Lives Matter. <laughs>